Sort out a warranty claim for 600 quid. And he's bought a Jaguar F-Type. Oh! I've got so many cars coming in via cars, but it's more now, so I want a boat now. The, the KN, and it was me that was driving it when it crashed. Really? It does feel very flat. I got pulled over by the police on the way back as well. I was oh, just really? like, oh, I'm just going, I'm going home. Those aren't the type of people that you want to be financing a car with because anything that goes wrong, the minor little things, it's going to be done through the finance company, it's going to be a real problem. Uh, well, I've got two cars going out this afternoon, so I've got a bit of take work for them ready. The Alpha and the X3. Um, sort out a warranty claim for 600 quid. Answered the phone about a million times. Barrow Motors, Jason speaking. Yeah, that's all right. Mate. Yeah, no worries. We'll see you on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Same again. No, nice one. Thanks, Andrew. See you Wednesday. Ta da, mate. Bye. Barrow Motors, Jason speaking. And what's the mileage roughly? Has it got service history and two keys? Some general condition? Retail, I mean, on a forecourt, is 3,000. So to buy in, cap clean, which is a good one with full history, 1,500. Average, 1,175. So 1,200 quid, it's probably worth to us. Uh, it would leave you with minus 1,200. I'll get the calculator, bear with me a second. 6,300 to pay. No, that's all right. Give us a bell. Nice one. Thanks again. Cheers. Bye bye. Somebody possibly buying the 7 Series with his worthless CLS. Seven previous keepers. No service history. Sounds a real gem. Uh, what else? I raised for Dan to pick up something in Bradford. Oh, yeah. One of our cars bought for more. He said, Yeah, I'll take that. And she said, would you do any more? I said, not really, we don't have to. I said, I'll give you 50 quid extra, because it looks a nice car, actually. And then when I took his details, there's one that Joe made an offer on. When I wrote down his details and booked it in, Bradford postcode. So Dan will be overjoyed with that, four hours away. Uh, what else? Andrew Castle. Guy that sold us the SL350. He's got another Mercedes to sell us, which I need to book in properly. Let me do that. Uh, you remember the RS5, the Hot Wheels car? Yeah. He had a stability control warning light and then when um, he took it in they couldn't do the rear suspension it was all seized and rusted and blah 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 so it needed a couple of arms 600 pounds not not too bad right so nearly end of the day what is it 20 past four Dan should be back shortly he's been off today look at him been chewing through that little sod um, he's been to London and he's bought a Jaguar F-Type can't remember if I told you that already very exciting 3 litre supercharged V6 uh, not the V8 sadly but maybe probably more desirable potentially, I don't know, whatever that's what it's got um, but he needs, because it's so low he needs to be able to reverse the trailer up to the wash bay so I'm going to have to ask these guys to move that out of the way the X3 which is sold is in the way as well don't really know why but uh, we'll just make sure all that stuff's moved around look our other Juliet has arrived that James from Chops Garage may want if it's up to his standards so we'll get some footage of that in the morning and let him know then he can pick that and his Honda CRV up or CRZ, CRZ at the same time have you seen that already this got delivered on Saturday come around here and I'll show you Mark, this van is back in about 20 minutes. He says he wants to be able to reverse the trailer up to here because the car's so low. Right, okay. 
So I don't know what's happening with the X3. I'll move him. He's going out today anyway, so he, oh, I think the it? customers are here to collect them. Okay. So yeah, I'll move him round to the front. And oh then... yeah, I saw the cash guy out there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'll move him round to the front and then. Cool. Yeah, and then, then that can just pull forward. Yeah. 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 Um, Let's have a look at the CRZ. Quite funky, really. Irritatingly, so James has bought this, James at Chops Garage, from a subscriber, and he said, could they have it, so could they drop it here? And then James will arrange to get it picked up from here. He'd seen the walk around videos and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I said, yeah, of course, no problem. When the guy turned up to drop it off, lovely couple, and he was like, I did offer it to you via our carsportformore.com. But I think James had just beat me to it on the old emails. So James bought it, not me. And now I've had to store it for him. Talk about rubbing salt in the wounds. Right, so is it Monday? Tuesday? Yeah. Uh, right, yes, so we are heading via the back lanes to Western Supermare because we were going to Mobile Eco Tuning headquarters. We're in a Porsche Cayenne that frankly just doesn't make enough horsepower. It's only got a measly 380. And I think we can do better. We could probably make this 450 horsepower according to the statistics, but we're gonna go over there. We're getting set up as a vehicle remapping agent. So we're gonna have remapping tools, be able to remap cars or get more power get more economy all that sort of stuff um, and we'll have good maps from mobile eco tuning who are like one of the bigger names a nationwide company and uh, as like a test example we're gonna do this car so heading over there now apparently training it takes about an hour which isn't very long at all and we will be remapping everything Toby's getting excited he wants his golf remapped Mark uh, who bought the Audi A5, mm, what do you call it? Well, it's the five door one anyway. Uh, he wants his thing sport back, is it? I don't know if it is a sport back on it. It might be. Either way, he wants that remapped as well. So we'll just be remapping left, right and center, which could be amazing because it's, it, it's a really good profit making kind of aside to your business. So, um, quite excited about it to be honest what will be really interesting is whether they can actually teach me how to do it because I am a, a bit of a technophobe I mean it's all right if I'm really into whatever the subject is I should be okay with this and I imagine they must know that it, it must need to be childproof for someone like me to operate it because I haven't brought anyone else to kind of learn the, the system um, and it, realistically, it's probably not going to be me doing the mapping each time. Maybe Dan or something. So I probably should have brought Dan, but I didn't. So good luck to us all. Anyway, we are going to make a full separate video on it, uh, which may or may not be out by the time this comes out. Uh, if it has come out, we'll link it here. If it hasn't, make sure you subscribe. And you hit the bell thingy, because then it make, gives you a notification or something when it comes out. So uh, yeah, that's it. We'll see you in Western. the road in Western Superman which is home to the headquarters. It's got very good bearings, it's gonna take a while. Very well, we're just yeah. looking for you. Yeah, we've done our bit, we were just spinning the wheel. Spinning the wheel, it takes a while, yeah. It, it does, yeah. It's got a bit I of a should have. I should it have is waited, but I'm not sure anyone ever wins. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. What, waited so that you don't win? Well no, I just think there's a way we waited it, it just takes so long to stop. We did, we've added some. It's got wind. a very good bearing. Giving away a couple of Bluetooth speakers. Yeah. This is the actual bit of kit that is going to help us connect to the car via the computer and put on the map that we want. It looks very cool, so I'm very excited to get in here. It's even got like a little security tab type thing on. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So, this is our actual auto tuner box. Loads of cables, I guess, to connect to different cars, different ECUs, power cable. So it's just a USB. That is potentially the coolest USB stick I've ever seen. And I don't know. K2 
cable connector or something. I guess they're going to teach us all of this shortly. But that is the actual bit of kit. Great three day you are buying, and we've got uh, 11 hours and three to start. RS5 you're buying, 11 hours and four to be five, 11 hours and six. At 11 hours and six, 11, 7, 11, 11, 7, 11, 7, 11 hours and 7, 11, 11, 7, 11, 8. 11, 8, 11, booking at 12, uh, 9. On sale. Four service records to go with it. Our reserve set at 12. At 11,900, that's right. 11,900, I guess. On a provisional, I guess we'll get the option to accept it, which I probably will. Oh! That is definitely a lot quicker. That is crazy. That is crazy. We only went like 20 miles an hour then. We can just tell it was just like off. Should we put it into... Oh, we are in a, already in a low... Let's put it in normal mode for a start so it doesn't just lift the suspension up. Ready then, we'll just... I think it was almost trying to wheel spin over the bumps. The other thing as well, they said we could do like gearbox tunes as well, so I wonder if we could like speed up the gearbox on this. Not that it's bad, but... How does it feel uh, in the passenger seat? Yeah, sick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jason. We've made Jason feel sick. That's that's all the testimony you need, really. Hey, an extension cable. Yeah, I think it's the right one for it. Oh, there's... Oh, yeah, that won't reach. I'll put Jason into one. Now I've got to try and remember how this works. So, currently 272 horsepower, go to 310 horsepower, and gain 110 newton meters of torque. That's it. I think I'm about to just read the ECU. They had it set up, which we gave it set up quite nicely in here, just on that TV, so they had it all up on the screen on the TV. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. So there's two types. There was like a, a virtual read, or what was it called? What do they call it? Um, versus, so very easy difficulty method. We can look at the method. It actually gives you difficulty of the remap. Oh, so that'd yeah, be like between... OBD location and whatever. That's between one that's like in the vehicle and one that's on a bench, I suppose. Yeah. Cool. Um, right, so we've got that. Where did it say? So we want stage one. Then we can scroll down. Oh, if you right. want to do any function deletes, not that we would. And there's multiple stages as well. Yeah, I mean, it tells you, if you do multiple stages, it says at stage two, it tells you what hardware you need. Oh, wow. In order to be able to do that. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. And you can do cracks and popples and hard cut. Yes, I want cracks and popples on my Land Rover. No, I don't. For your off-road yeah. vehicle only. What's I'm telling? So that's uploaded and is now in the queue. So, I actually get a text message. Here we are. Your file has been received. No way. They'll make us a map. 
So that's gone to their head head office then? Up in Western. Yeah. And they'll literally, they showed us, it's like, he's got one of those massive curved screens, he's there like he's dialing into the Matrix. <laughs> it's all just blue, yeah, green yeah. lights. Oh, is that in their there. glass room in there? Yeah. And so someone will be beavering away on that file. Yeah, I mean, they'll probably have a stock file. Yeah. But they might, you know, whatever. Well, and then you'll just get a message to say, file's ready. Yeah. Then you download it, and then you upload it to the car, and wow. Good That's actually really seamless. Yeah. I can't yeah. believe how quickly it read the info off of the... Like, yeah, so the other one you said was like a, a virtual read or something, or a, I can't remember what you said it was, something like that. But basically, if you can't actually read... So some ECUs you can't read, you can write them. Okay. So they've got a server, like a database. You would just get like a, a standard map for this car. Okay. And you would have that saved to the computer. It does mean if someone has previously like mapped out like AdBlue or any of that sort of stuff, and you went back to the standard map, you might start getting AdBlue faults. Oh, or whatever. Right, I see. Yeah. But um, oh, well, I understand. Yeah, because that's back in the day when it used to say you couldn't tell if a car had been mapped or not. So if you have a remap, mm. some things you can. Might. Some you can't. Yeah. yeah. That's very cool. I like that. I'm quite excited. Looking forward to this. I've done a fair few thousand miles in this, so to see what it's going to be like now, it's going to be good. And I get to try it out today. Got an hour's, no, two hours worth of uh, towing to do today, so that'd be good. Oh, where says. are you going? Uh, Marlborough. Which sounds like it's miles away from here, but it's not. I think it's about an hour and a hour and 15 from here. Yeah. So not too bad. Picking up a Mercedes SL. No. Just waiting for our file. Has he got to download the file first? So you choose it through the, it chooses it through chatting on it, is it? No, we like, you download a file, put that in, and then you send it to them and request one, and they... Oh, right, and they'll send the correct one. We're just waiting for our file to come back from HQ, which they say should be a few minutes, but it could be up to an hour, but it's very rarely up to an hour. Right. Oh, apparently it's already got a decent tune on it. Power. Yeah. It's always disappointing though, isn't it? When you're like, oh, you get a map, you get loads of power, it's like, oh, it's... It probably explains why it's always felt like it goes really well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it has always been one of those, like, it goes really well for a brick. Okay. It, what's funny is you get in this and you drive it, it feels lighter than my... Yeah, four. Although what did catch me out last night was going around a corner. I went to go, I went to go around a roundabout as I went into Bridgewater and was like, oh, we had I'm not in the Porsche. It, it was like, whoa! Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. But it only took 60 seconds to write the new map on there on this one. Obviously it took longer on the portrait. Sorted. Remapper. I've even got my uh, auto-tuner t-shirt on today. Quite a nice car, this to be honest. Yeah. Have a little bit of bodywork damage on it. Can't just remember to trade it on. I'll make Theo some interest in it. Are you trading it, is it? Oh, uh, maybe. I've got so many cars coming in via Cars Bought for More now that, uh, and we're buying like stuff that's really nice, like buying it for like 20 grand with to sell for 24, 25. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm just running out of money. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, somebody's got to give, trade on some of the stuff that's not moving very quickly for us. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we haven't had this long at all. Was this, was, this was a car's waffle war as well. It is great stuff, we normally keep it, but I've offered him one other car, which is a, one of the Dacia joggers. Yeah. He's like, oh, have you got anything else we might be interested in? So uh, he wants to buy two at a time. Okay, could maybe do this, it would save us having to do body work. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. So I'll just wait just bring or, it back and Yeah. We'll just bring it back and we'll do it. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely fine, mate. No worries. Cool. Sure. Come on, cheers, my lads. See you in a bit. Burnham Home Car Wash, obviously very busy today. I want to go down and check out the Burnham Harbour since I went down to uh, Salkham at the weekend and they had a low out of it. a gorgeous bay, harbour, or whatever just like you don't even really think you're in England anymore. 
everyone's got these little ribs and they're just like pottering about in their boats. I want a boat now. It's, I mean, I'll be honest, you know, the Bristol Channel's not quite as attractive, but it would be fun. You could do fishing trips, stuff like that. I need to remember to uh, call the mower people. My mower's broken down, so I haven't been able to cut the grass. It's my like, favourite thing of the week to do. It's getting out of control. So we pop down the farm. Because... Thank you. Uh, I need to get a little walk around video of the... What's down here? For chops. The Alfa Romeo Giulietta. So you move the fence, look, and move the plants and whatever, and opened up for this barn here. Looking lovely, ready to be filled in on the sides. Now I've just got to hope all the paperwork's in there as well. Right, here we are James, this is the Julieta. Uh, look around. Wheels have got a bit of corrosion and a lot of brake dust obviously, but it's not the end of the world. The body panels so far actually look quite great. Right, one owner, one previous owner anyway. Uh, service at 51,000 miles. There's the all important timing belt kit with water pump. Look at that. Just take a picture of this for him. So it was last service in 2019 on 51,000 miles, basically. It's quite a decent car, this. I said, would you have any interest in this car? And he said, yeah, but it's only a thousand pounds, mate, if it's really good. And I was like, oh, well, we've, we've paid more than that. We gave 1,400 quid for it. Uh, but he still wants it, apparently. So I, sh I, I assume he assumes he's getting it for 1,400 pounds, which is fair enough. It's not a bad car, is it, really? an engine. Tell you what we'll do. Just for... Oh, I want to know the MOT on it. Let's do a vehicle score check on it. We can tell James how well it scores. Right, into our reg. Echo Alpha 6.0 Uniform Julia X-Ray 722 out of 999 which is good, it's 216 above average actually with a 92% MOT pass rate not so good stuff on it, let's have a look at the vehicle look at MOT history uh, so yeah it's got MOT for about a month based. no expiry on the 5th of December and the only advisory was offside front tyre worn, which has obviously been sorted, so you'd hope it would sail an MOT. Uh, previously, what did it fail on? Tyres, tyres, tyres. So, no sign of rust or anything like that. Let's have a look at performance on this bad boy. 1.4 turbo, I think. 118 brake horsepower. Uh, 0 to 60 in 9.4 seconds and 12 months of MO, uh, 12 months tax cost is 210 pounds. So there we have it. Now, oh, should we see if it's ULES compliant? It is. Don't forget, you can do their history checks. You can do the salvage only check or the full history ultimate plus check. Uh, that's 11 pounds 95. You use my code shifting metal 20. It'll be 9 pounds 58, I believe, and that's going to tell you whether it's been written off, been used as a taxi, whether it used to be a police car or MOD car, whether it's been imported, exported whether it's been crashed, all that stuff. It also gives you some pricing figures on there as well, so if you think about buying it, then it will kind of give you an idea of what you should be paying for it. And James should be paying a lot more than £1,400 for this, but I'm a nice guy, so I'll probably let him have it if he wants it. We'll have to park it over there next to his Honda CRZ thing, which I missed out on buying, because I did send an inquiry to Cars for more, but we were just swamped and I didn't get back to them. So he bought it, but said, could they drop it to me? Um, 
yeah. So, right, we'll send that off to him, but that's all we need, really. Um, yeah, I've got a few other things we need to sort out. I'll probably send that Alhambra to auction, maybe the Mini as well. Sophie was going to have a go at selling them, but I don't know if she has. And, yeah, other random bits and pieces down here. Need to do something with that SL500 as well. Was he a car dealer or not? No, he's a cabinet maker, but he had two old boys. Uh, is he keep, I take it he's taken a BMX plate off, is he, or something? Yeah. Oh. BMX plate's hard. I've got the original plate down here. Um, I've already transferred it to tape, used a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Should we even get the roof down? Uh, we do the. Oh, the boot thing? Yeah. Oh, it's, this is really weird. I don't know if the white one's got it. The whole boot's carbon. Oh, really? The in, if you look inside the boot lid, it's all carbon yeah. fibre, and he said the bonnet's the same. You need to do the boot separator, it says. Close it. Oh, that's the wrong way around then. Like the other one, they've both got the next scarf as well. Nice. So it pumps hot air around in there. That's so quick. Yeah. That's awesome. Just like the super bombers, right? Oh, that's nice. That's a nice tone. It's got so many honey holes inside. There's one behind the seat as well. I didn't actually, when I popped the bonnet, when I looked at it, look at it. Fortunately, they've done the windscreen wipers because that cost them £122 wow. for a pair of wipers. Yeah. This is insane. Have you had the keys in it? There you go. Sure. I have given you glasses a go. I can't, I can't promise I've got anything of any use, but I, I did a. When I got there, I did the chat with them without just sort of turning up and being like, yes, hi. But I did a walk around, got in the car, moved it onto here, and then I took a couple of screenshots. And then just before I left, I sort of just filmed leaving their yard and driving down the road. Whether it's of any use, who knows? I only did it was service, I think you said just under 3,000 miles ago. So it's a pound beat. Where the disc goes horrible inside. Yes, yeah, it goes all that sticky yeah. sort you of. You just take the sticky bit off the wood veneer on the top, yeah. it's just a little bit there, the rest of it's going to have to stay as it yeah, is. Yeah, no worries, mate, I'll do nice that. Nice and right, it's only a little bit there. Bought from Inline Media for £4,000, I think, was the Bradford Boys, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Sold for seven and a half. Yeah, I did get some new doormats, yeah. I went to proper job yesterday to get whatever it was I needed. Um, I got a new one for out the front, because that was like, wicking away, wasn't it? And then a new one for out there, and then we'll redo the back office a little bit. How's it all going? Good, got a reservation on the ODA3 from the couple that were in yesterday. Smashing. Um, good inquiries, nothing signed on that respect, but yeah. The bloody guy with the, I don't know if you saw the email, the S5, not RS5. 
Yes, and he's now oily. Yeah, I, I'm just going to say, look, you've got a 14-year-old V8. Had it been, you know, that and that alone, we probably would have said yes, but no, it's, it's not that. Because the guy, yeah, he said, oh, we got this one, whatever, and said, well, send me an estimate. I don't know how much he said. He said he thinks it's the sum thing. Yeah, um, whatever. 50 quid, something like that. Um, yeah, I say to him, look, you know, you bought an old V8. It's got a bit of an oil leak, it's not fluid. If you want to fix, bring it back to us and we'll do it. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, that's fair, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's going to cost us nothing to do. Yeah. Gasket that whatever, and we've just what was it, the six hundred quid for the whatever else it was? Uh, there's a bloody uh, something else as well, two hundred yeah. quid. Yeah, that's it now. But yeah, that those issues it left here with those issues. He phoned me like he left on the Friday and he was on the phone by Monday. What issues? The issues that we just paid for. I know it's been a long time coming. Oh, right. But they're like the wobbling at the back and the yeah, the engine manager might come on straight away. Mm. So I was in pod, was it Mike Brewer this morning I heard? It was, yeah. Okay. It's the way you hold out your end. Yeah, it's brilliant, it's good. Was he um, like a TV persona or was he? Uh, he's just, I don't know, because I've seen a lot of him just, just being himself. So he's yeah. just very, just um, like really down to earth. He's still like properly hands on, delivering cars even, <laughs> and all that sort of <laughs> stuff, yeah. And, um, Fair play. Yeah. So he still trades there? Yeah. And uh, he's a fan of the channel, you know, he's been watching him for a while and whatever, and I didn't want to like, correct it, but he'd obviously just recently watched the latest auction video where I went and bought a load of cheap stuff, which isn't really a normal stuff, Yeah. but it was the cheap sale day, and he's like, yeah, if you're at Joe's pitch and he's selling cars for like five grand, I'm like, hold up. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I couldn't correct Mr. Brewer. <laughs> so Fiesta's finally ready, a nice part of invoices. Lovely. Um, yeah, nothing you just what you want me for at the minute. I yeah, think I was thinking that E class is coming, obviously, it's lovely and all the rest of it, but then so was the last one we had, which was all the bit doggy, probably did delay to set. I was thinking just stick it straight in at like a good price or a great price if it's still you know yeah. over three days, just to price. see because if it goes like that, it's worth yeah, trying again. White and whatever. And yeah, I just don't so want to Roman's get stuck with it. Roman's International's never played on it. What? Roman's International, you know who they are? They're like one of the big supercar dealers. Are they? Yeah, and <laughs> um, that's obviously where it's come from at some point. It's got Roman's International yeah, never yeah. plays on. It's almost like Where's that? a downgrade for the Paramotors one time. Um, yeah, I mean, I would... Well, the E-Class has got their one, is it? The white E-class, yeah. Bloody hell. I wouldn't be surprised if you bought it from there. Because he obviously got the white mm. SL5. I would try to it quite keenly at the minute. Let's try and... I think it's going to... I think the floodgates will start opening up again now. But we've got a lot of stock and I've got a lot more stock I want to buy as well. So it's just... Yeah, okay. Well, juggling I'll, I'll be honest, I'll, anything that's over three or four weeks, I'll get it good or great. Theo's going to have the black jogger. Yeah. The Fiat 500 and the Benga. Right. So I'll sort that if, momentarily. So I just put the paperwork, because the, the Venga and the job, I mean the job we've done nothing to it apart from check it over obviously, but the Venga we've serviced. So I'll put the paperwork in with there just so you can see yeah, it's done. Yeah, that's fine, yeah, I did tell them that was the case. And um, the Fiat we've also serviced actually. I think that T grand thing with it's in but in Bradford, I'm quite hard with it. I say that you know we'd be interested in it because we're not paying five hundred pounds to have it delivered if you want to get it delivered to us. Well let's um I know you got booked in for next Thursday now, haven't you? Oh you just moved it. Yeah, to okay. Oh well, I there's a guy um I need to go through my emails who's offering oh, yes. his transport stuff. Yes. So I could just say to him, look, how much to go and pick this yeah. up for okay. him, whatever. Um see if we can't do a deal because I mean we're getting so many of it, it might help to have another driver available. Yeah, yeah, okay. Some merchandise. Don't forget you can buy yourself a lovely mug, key ring, air freshener, hoodie, t-shirt. You get some business cards when you're I've ordered some, they should be arriving tomorrow. I am just heading out um, to 
BLS body repairs because my mum's Corsa is over there and they they want me to come have a look at it to see you know what I'm happy with my mum's not really fussed about how it looks she just wants it MOT'd again um, so yeah they want me to go over and check that out so heading over there now and then got to be back for a meeting at three so I'm using my uh, Ray-Ban camera thingies so let's go Right, that's uh, Brad spoken to. I'll show you as we go around. So the Corsa is my mum's. They had a shunt um, up the back and it did the sort of rear quarter. You probably would have seen it. Oh, if you haven't, we'll probably do it. We're doing a full video on it actually because you know what, what cars get written off for is crazy really. But he was just saying, how far do you want to go with it? because uh, the boot doesn't quite line up. It's off to one side, and obviously if he tries to move it around, then, um, you know, you're gonna start throwing the boot would hang out over the arches and whatever, the wing. Um, so, yeah, I've told them that this is my mum, who is, you know, not fussy about cars, and they just want it back functional. And for some reason, maybe someone, uh, you know, in, viewing or in the comments will know, She's been told, supposedly, by her insurance company that because she's had a payout on it and they've written it off, that she needs to um, have it sort of fixed and re-MOT'd within a month. Otherwise, they would cancel the policy. I've never heard anything like that. Brad's never heard of anything like that. I don't know if she's just confused or there is some weird new thing they're implementing. But either way, she's at the beginning of a, a new policy, so it wouldn't matter to get a new one. But now she's panicking then that... Um, it would cost more to ensure this car that's being written off, which it wouldn't, so odd. Anyway, that is that dealt with. We've got James and uh, his mate, Adrian, I think it is, coming up to collect a couple of cars from the farm, uh, which conveniently is not a million miles from where we are here, seeing Brad, so I will go and get the gates unlocked and the keys out for him, and then we'll get back for our meeting at three. I think I've got a bit of a squeaky brake on this thing, if I'm rolling. I don't know if these glasses would have picked that up or not, but... It's only when you're rolling along slowly, when you come to a stop, it's uh, fine. Right, so that's the two cars James is getting. That's the CRZ, as I've already told you a hundred times, that he's bought from someone and had dropped off to us. And the Alpha Giulietta. Uh, so... Keys are left out for that. You can probably hear that desk a bit better now. Annoying. Have to get them to have a look at that. Hi Jason, it's Joe from Barrow Motors. Hello Joe, how are you? Not too bad, yourself? Yeah, good. Good, good. I, I, got, good. I got your message from Jason earlier. Yeah, I mean literally, I only subscribed to your channel about two weeks ago. I turned telly on this morning and I saw the, um, the, the KN and it was me that was driving it when it crashed. Really? <laughs> okay. Yeah, but, Amazing, yeah, that'd be brilliant. Yeah, so, but no, it, uh, what, what happened was I was uh, <clears throat> driving back from Birmingham one day, back into Stratford, and um, it was middle of August, but there was a storm and blew a tree down in front of me, and I literally drove through a tree. Really? Um, yeah, so, and it, actually, the damage wasn't that bad. It was, I mean, it looked bad, but there was no real structural damage. It was all sort of body panels, really, and a little bit of, um, like, radiator. Um, sort of, obviously, the radiator was ripped out, but, um, yeah, so it wasn't, it wasn't a, um, 
the car crash. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't like a head-on with another car or something then, or whatever, yeah. No, 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 no. So, um, I mean, I can, I can whiz you over some photos of, um, of, the, of, the, of the aftermath, if you want. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's all good stuff. It'd be interesting to, uh, to see it. Yeah, but I mean, I, th- I thought, you know, because it's... Um, it's a charity. It might just bump it up a little bit more if you've got a bit more history with it and a um, bit of service history. Maybe people might be inclined to buy a couple of tickets. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, we'll put an update. and um, Yeah, because we, we haven't got any service history other than what we're going to do on it. So, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, so I think I've got... Uh, I might even have another key somewhere. Um, there is only one... I, I, did, um, I did a service with a poor specialist about six months before it happened and I can't find that one, but... In the um, in the book, I'm looking at it now. It's got three main Porsche dealer service histories: Coles Hill, Sutton Coldfield, and um, sixteen, forty, and fifty-six thousand miles. I've got a couple of MOTs as well. Amazing. Um, so um, yeah, look. Well, yeah. Uh, when when the uh, what do you want to do? I mean, um, I'm happy to pay for you to put them in the post, and I'll I'll, I'll trade you some um, you know, like a barometer's mug or something if you want. Um, but yeah, it'd be great. And if you can email me the pictures, I'll do. Yeah, I'll do. I'll do that. Um, I'll send you a couple of pictures. Do you want to drop me your um, email address? Yeah. Text? Yeah. Or I'll WhatsApp you, and you maybe you can WhatsApp to me. Whatever's easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, actually, there was there was something I was gonna. Um, actually, I've got a nine eleven nine nine six nine zero. Okay. And that was, uh, I'm kind of at it for and I'm sort of like thinking of selling it, but I know it's not the best time to sell it at the moment. Mm. Um, I didn't know, I, did, I didn't know whether or not you could just do a bit of an appraisal. What, what I was kind of thinking is, um, if I get a nice day between now and the end of November, I might just whiz down. Uh, you can, you can have a look at it. I could bring the documents down if you want. I always mean it. Yeah. By all means, I'm not an expert on them, but um, it would be interesting to see. And I do know someone who is an expert on them, so I can always get their opinion. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Either way, I really appreciate you calling, and what a weird sort of small world. I know, just literally, I only subscribed to your channel two weeks ago. How random is that? <laughs> and it popped, popped up this morning. I almost spat my cornflakes out. I actually, actually, I had to go and double check, I thought, oh, I recognise that, Red. Be mine. I thought, yeah, I literally looked at the logbook and everything, and it's, and it's there. So, Brilliant. yeah, um, just drop, drop me your email, and I'll ping you the pictures over in the first instance. I'll take a picture of the service stamps and that if you want to get something updated sooner. So. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, All right, Jason, I will get you that across, or drop, or drop your WhatsApp or something. Bye, right, Joe. Nice one. Thanks so much for that. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Power of YouTube. Crazy. When did we put that? When he put the video out last night, the first thing he sees this morning, he's like, "That's my old car." So now we've got more service history for it. Lovely jubbly. Right, someone else is trying to call me. Right. Uh, what time is it? It's about twenty past one on Friday. Got a part exchange car here, which we've got to decide what we're going to do with it. Days gone by, we would have done a separate video on a car like this. Uh, I bought a cheap whatever, but I'm not going to bother. We're just going to throw it into the weekly. What I do want to do is figure out what are we going to do with it. It's obviously not going to retail it here. We've only given 750 quid for it. Um, but do I want to send it on to auction? Do I want to let Sophie have it and try and sell it? Um, or do I want to see if a trade contact, James or someone wants it? Um, we need to have a quick look around it, see what it looks like, kind of get an idea of what it's going to clean up like, I guess. Quick test drive. Um, if it's, you know, got problems or whatever, we'll just send it to auction without thinking about it. But if it seems like it's quite nice, then we will try and do something with it. So, 2005 BMW 325i uh, SE. So, uh, it's an automatic. I did peep in the window earlier, which... Um, would be my preference in this, other than a lot of people would like a manual in one of these because they'd probably drift it. Um, does everything work? That's going to be the question. So, we, as I say, we took this in part exchange. We sold the BMW 7 Series that was the raffle car. Um, the winner for that took a cash alternative for £4,000. So we had that, we had it in stock. It didn't last very long. Why would it? It was a lovely car. And this was the part exchange, but he wasn't expecting a lot for it, so... 
should be reasonably okay. Like I say, I gave 750 quid for it. I can't get a cap price on it and I can't get an auto trader price on it because it's just too old being a 2005. What's that make it? 19 years old, nearly 20 years old. Um, but looking at auto trader, the closest I could find in an SE 325i, so the six cylinder, um, I think it's a three litre, but it could be, two, I don't know. I'm not, you know, I don't know these things. Um, was 3,000 and something, just over 3,000. So, you know, we've paid sensible money for it, for what it is, I think. Let's see how it sounds, because it's been sat here since yesterday, at least. Not too bad. Uh, 126,000 miles, 389, crucially. Obviously very important. Uh, we seem to have a broken... Uh, cup holder. I really like these designer cup holders in BMWs. They just work and make sense. Um, but for some reason that won't go back in. Not the end of the world. The good news is um, it does have MOT. No sat nav. It's auto. Does it have heated seats? No heated seats. I guess to be expected it's the SE spec. Pop the bonnet and have a look under there. And then I'll run a quick vehicle score on it as well just so we can kind of see what the MOT history and everything say. Look at that. Um, why does it always take like three weeks to unscrew a coolant cap these days? It used to be like a quarter turn and it was unlatched. Let's get my torch on so we can see what it actually looks like. Oh nice greeny bluey color i guess i think that's green uh, i don't know if you can see that in there toby but you have to take my word for it and it looks like it's at a good level so that's good just check the condition of the once i finished just spending all day tightening this up it does smell a bit oily put my phone away Ooh, what a horrible engine cover that has I mean it is 19 years old so getting brittle I guess oh it's a bit that's sort of like I'm not going to touch it because it'll be quite schmegged up but even the top of these I don't even know what they are lifter springs or something I don't know you know I don't have a bloody clue they look quite grubby looks like it could do with a good engine flush as and when it had a service is there a dipstick? You would have thought there would be on something this age, but I'm struggling to see it. E90, no, it isn't E90. They probably did, they did have a, like a, what's it gauge, didn't they? So maybe we don't have a dipstick. Probably E90 fans out there will be uh, screaming at me that I'm missing it, but um, probably it wants a service, but we will check. I think there's some paperwork we could have a look at, but headlights want a buff, wants a set of number plates. Body work actually reasonably good and the wheels as well I think will clean up quite well other than maybe looking a bit discoloured I don't know looks all right around the back we've got going on the boot oh it needs some boot struts that's for sure because it won't hold its own weight unless you've gone past the point of whatever some very grubby mats we've got the Verbantash which is German for first aid kit at least I think because they've all got it written on them um, yeah, you don't get a spare wheel then. Batteries under there. What's in there? Nothing. Triangle thing there. Seems all right. It wants a good valet, but you know, two keys. How many owners? Five owners. Quite a lot of paperwork there, which is a good start. I'm not gonna spend too long looking at it. We'll just look at the service book. Oh yeah, last done, ooh, about two months ago, 120,000 miles, so actually not too bad at all. Don't know why it's a bit smeggy at the top then, age, whatever I guess, or maybe it does want a good flush, maybe that's just how they go, I don't know. We've got two, you have to bring tugboat out here. All right, come out if you behave. 
Uh, right, Tugboat could see me through the window of the office and he had to be out here. He does like a car, so he'll be straight in there. Um, what do we got? I said two, five, eight, eleven service stamps, or the last one doesn't have a stamp. So, did it get done? Did someone write it in? Was it a DIY one? I don't know. But actually, you know, not bad as far as history goes. Two keys. So, crucially, um, oh yeah, we want to look at MOT, don't we? Um, Tugboat likes it. If anyone's watching this, I mean, that is the ultimate salesman. Look, he wants to get out of here. He's done with work. He wants to get in the car and go home. Any car. Let's do the vehicle score quickly. We can see what it scores like, what the MOT history is saying. So I'll put in our registration, which is Hotel Delta 05, Foxtrot Delta Kilo. It's going to give us a score from 1 to 999. Ours is 605. Not bad. 93 above average. It's good to see. Is it you less compliant? It probably is. Yep. It's got an 86% MOT pass rate. So let's have a look at the MOT history. Uh, it's got MOT until June 16th, 2025. Passed with some advisories. Front brake disc worn. Near side front inner tyre worn. Rear brake pipe covered, uh, corroded, covered in grease or whatever. That one you can ignore because it's usually just nothing. Uh, near side front in a tyre. Have they changed it? Probably not because it looks quite sort of perish. So it's going to want a tyre at least. And discs. Oh yeah, there's a pretty, there's a pretty decent lip on that. And they feel a little bit wavy. I think actually, to be fair to Rory, who part exchanged it in, I seem to remember him saying he thought they were warped, which we'll find out when we go out. Um, because this is one where I actually hopped in and helped out when they were busy at the front and we sat down and I dealt with Rory, so um yeah not too bad really um do you know what i'm sure we must have hbi'd it when we made him the offer yeah i think we would have done a history check on it if you saw this on facebook marketplace auto trader any of that sort of stuff then you need to do a history check but the good news is vehicle score can cover that as well so i always do their ultimate plus report which is 12 pounds 95 but with my discount you can get 20 percent off that is shifting metal 20 making it a lot cheaper for you and it will cover everything whether this car used to be a taxi whether it's been clocked whether you know it's had a crash and someone hasn't told you about it whether it's on the insurance register whether it's been seen at salvage auctions and all that sort of stuff and importantly as well whether it's still got someone else's finance against it which i've been stung with a couple of times i have to say you don't want to end up owning a car that gets uh repossessed from you when you don't even know anything on it so that's all good. I think we'll take it out for a spin, we'll see how it drives, then we can make our decision on what we do with it. I guess we're going to clean it either way, but let's take it for a spin anyway and we'll find out what it's like. It was a bit of condensation or whatever coming out the exhaust, I guess. It smells a bit oily. Yeah. That Steph was there, so I thought I'd get his opinion because there's a bit of I think it's just steam condensation coming out of the exhaust. It does smell a bit oily. Does it smell a bit oily to you? Not so much now we're in here, but these get like problems with the breather pipes and whatever, don't they? Got a few loosey goosey uh, ball joints, I think. God, it feels underpowered. I don't know what do you think, it doesn't feel, I mean, it doesn't feel very... I am used to driving a 450 horsepower thing now, but still... It does feel very flat. Interesting. Interesting that um, Steph, who was outside the car then when I was revving it, said that sounds weak. Flat to the floor. 40 miles an hour. 50 miles an hour. 60 miles an hour. I don't know what these are like performance wise, but I thought they'd be better than that for a 325i. Has it got uh, like a blocked 
I don't know what makes a difference. Does a block breathery thing make a difference? I don't know. But you can hear that rumbling. That's probably like lower arms at once. It's just moving around like that, so you can just hear a rumbling through the car. Near side front, I think. Let's test out these brakes in a second, see if they are warped. really going fast enough to tell but they felt quite coarse god this is like painfully slow I don't think they're warped no they're not warped they seem to be working alright they are very low though I could be wrong but I, don't, I think there's something not quite right with this now, I have to admit, my mistake, I didn't test drive this, but it wouldn't have affected, I think, what we offer for it, because it is a running driving car. It's got MOT until next year, and what we've paid for it, it will go to auction and make more than that anyway. But I am breaking my own rule that I set for other people, which is to always test drive them. The radio also, they do this, I think, on BMWs, they pixelate, I think, is it BMWs, this series, uh, or is it Golf I'm thinking of, that like pixelate in the middle as well. So have we got, oh, oh yeah, look at that. What radio station are we on, Tobes? So that's not ideal. Um, yeah, I think this would just be an auction one. It's to save any headaches. Could just go through, we'll give it a quick spruce though. So we'll get back and I might even, Will I give it a clean of myself? I might, because I feel like this would be quite a satisfying one to clean. Maybe I will. I just remembered as well, I was just looking. One thing I didn't notice until I, well, I mean, I, I never even got in this car before. I just kind of took his word for it. But a uh, nice big crack there under the windscreen wiper. It does hide it very conveniently, but it is still there. And we have got a little chip over here. So uh, that wouldn't be an MT Felix. It's not really in your direct view but I guess that crack probably would be. I should know more, shouldn't I? I should be an expert. Is a crack a failure? Well, I think it is. Over X amount of whatever, because that's a good 10 inches longer across there. Anyway, we'll get it cleaned up anyway and probably ship it off to auction. have been delivered by our lovely landlady Jenny. Somerset Slice, some of you OGs of the channel will know about Somerset Slice. It is my vice, my Somerset vice. There you are. Um, yeah, don't know what's going on today. I'm gonna to be working in the office up front here just because we could be busy potentially with sales. Fingers crossed that we will see. Um, yeah, that's about it really. Don't know what else is going on. Probably need to move a few cars around. I think we sh have we got Mark here or have we got Dan here? Have you seen either of them? I think I've I've seen Dan, but I feel like I've heard Mark as well. Um, should only be one of them. I think it'll be Dan. Let's go and find out. Morning, Leo. All right. All right. Yeah, thank you for the cake. No worries. Have you got Mark in there or have you got Dan? Mark's not. Oh, here. I thought Dan was in yeah. today. Good morning. Hi. At what time did you get back yesterday? About 20 to 5. Oh, okay. I just went straight to the farm and I was in a foul mood. I got pulled over by the police on the way back as well. I was oh, just really? like, oh, I'm just going because I'm going home. <laughs> the oh, right. oh, I went past an old man who just did an emergency stop in front of me on a junction. I just saw red mist and was just like, <laughs> policeman then followed me and he, he pulled me over. He was like, what was that about? I'm like, old man just did an emergency stop in front of me. He went, oh, I didn't see that bit. He was like, you're a good driver, mate. I followed you for like five miles through the country lanes with a trailer on. He's like, I can see you're fine on driving. He's like, just chill. Like, thanks, mate. I've had a wasted day. He's like, nah, that's fair. <laughs> He's like, have a nice weekend, mate. I'm like, cheers, thanks. Apparently that guy's rung back up. Right. Since asking Jason if we still want the car. <laughs> no. Apparently he's paid it off now or something. Oh, 
Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I'll explain later when it comes to talking about biggest headache of the week. That's going to be it. Yesterday we looked at this, <coughs> test drove it and whatever, and I gave it a clean. It's looking loads better now. Still think it'll probably just go to auction, but at least it will look nicer for the auction. So I'm going to grab my little computer adapter thing, set myself up at the front. Once you've swapped over, you're going to be using this side, the rubbery side. Yeah. And we're just going to be doing the basically from the sort of what I'd call the hip of the car. So everything from the, the swage line up. Yeah? And sort of, you know, normally with a sponge you would do a very sort of gentle. With this you're going to spend a little bit more time. Not ages, but just a, li a little bit more than you would on average on the, with a sponge. Alright? This will get out quite a lot of those nasty dots and stuff on there. Temporary balloter. Before anyone complains, I don't clean cars. Yes. Right, yes, I've had a haircut and I've changed my jumper, and that's because I'm coming from the future. We had a bit of a technical issue with our Saturday footage. Jason was filming us, we had a microphone. Something happened. It would seem either Jason had my microphone or the other way around, and all we could hear was Jason's horrendous cold. So <laughs> Toby will insert some clips here. I mean, uh, so, I'm going to give you the rundown of Saturday from here. Best car bought, best car sold, biggest win and biggest headache. Because all of that was completely written off. I'd have had Ofcom replaints and everything for this. So, um, we have got the footage, so we can show you that. So basically what I was saying is best car sold, I should really, morally, say it was the Mercedes GLC because that wasn't in stock for very long. It's a nice one that we bought from James Harding down at Chops Garage. Uh, nice profit in it, nice people who came and bought it, just bish bash bosh, nice easy job. But selfishly, I said it was the white Freelander 2 that I'd bought a G3 and I actually did the sale on myself. It was, I mean, I, I say I did the sale on myself. I literally took a phone call and a deposit on the phone. But, you know, these days that's that's quite a lot for me. So, yeah, I was I was quite happy about that. That left us with best car bought. What I couldn't remember was what was that week and what wasn't that week, but I now know. So what I'd said anyway, and I stick by, is the black Mercedes SL350, black on black on black on black, you know, Darth Vader effect on it. Um, it looks very nice next to the white one that we've got that's completely standard. It's only on 44,000 miles, lovely guy to buy from, nice through cars bought for more, uh, really nice transaction. So that was definitely the best car bought. And then we had biggest win and biggest headache. I couldn't actually figure out from the footage what my biggest win was, but what I'd probably say is that sales were picking up and it's still going okay. So generally speaking, I think things are on the up. So I was happy about that. And then we had biggest headache, which the biggest headache that we had on this particular week was, I think it was either on, must have been on the Friday or the Thursday, Dan had driven all the way down to Dorchester to buy a car from some lovely subscribers, but we just had problems with settling the finance. Now, basically, and I'll do it again, give you my view on settling finance. If you're buying a car and you want to settle finance, or you're selling a car, which has outstanding finance on it, what way is right and what, uh, you know, people are going to be worried, aren't they? So basically, we, we sent him down there. They'd given us the bank details to pay off the finance, but when I typed it in, it didn't recognise it, which was really weird because it was a Santander consumer credit car loan account. And I banked with Santander and it was like, this account isn't right. Oh, well, that's weird. I said, oh, okay, tell them that I've paid them their part for argument's sake. Let's say I'd paid them 3,000 and we had to pay off 6,000 of finance. Basically what we normally do is ask the customer to get a sort of valid settlement statement from your lender, which you can ask for at any time. And it will tell you up until usually your next payment date, if you pay us this amount, that's how much it will be. And we will pay that amount directly to the lender and then we will pay the difference uh, between that and the value of the car to the customer. Uh, I sent the money to the customer. I tried to pay the money to Santander, but it just wouldn't work. So I said, Dan, just, just bring the car back. We'll figure it out between us rather than hanging around. I say it this way around, and this is the way I would do it. If you're buying a car, you want to be paying the finance company directly and paying the customer directly if there's anything in 
you know, positive equity. If there's negative equity, they need to be paying you and you pay the finance company, not any other way around. This way, you end up with a car which has the finance marker against it. It's no good to you if you just carry on holding on to it and you don't pay off the finance, so it's in your interest to pay it. But if you pay the customer the money, there's no guarantee they'll pay it. They might just decide, do you know what? I don't want the car anymore. I want the cash and I'll happily keep paying month by month. The problem is that the marker will still be against your car and you won't be able to sell it. So this is the way that works. So if you're selling a car and someone says, oh, I want to pay the finance company directly, that's pretty standard practice, so I wouldn't panic about it. What happened in this case is the bank account details wouldn't work and the customers got a bit nervous. Fair enough. Um, Dan just sat outside for a couple of hours trying to get all this stuff ironed out. I hadn't really noticed he was there for two hours because I would have probably flipped my lid um, because I'm paying him to kind of sit there and play pocket billiards and whatever while um, we were waiting on this to get resolved. But I was busy with other stuff. Long and short of it was, it was just, a, just an awkward one. Because strangely, I did look on Santander's website themselves and that was the account number they gave. So I don't really know what on earth was going on. In the end, we came away not having had the car. They refunded us the money that we paid them and uh, we had to leave it there. I think they were going to try and settle the finance themselves and then give us a call and we could come back and get it. You'll have to wait until next week's weekly to see if that happened. But yeah, that was the biggest headache this week, that week. Um, which was a pain at the time, but it's not really the end of the world. It was just, no one likes having a wasted day, do they? But it was no one's fault, really, other than Santander Consumer Credit. I'm calling you out. Get the account number right on your website. It just doesn't make sense. Why are you doing that to people? You're wasting our time. Anyway, that is it for this week. So as this goes out, the Harley-Davidson raffle will have ended. I don't know if I've done a live draw because I'm away that weekend. Um... Or, yeah, I mean, tomorrow for me, but, you know, as far as this goes, a week's time. Anyway, the as far as you're watching this, the Harley-Davidson raffle will have ended. You've missed out on that, but the good news is you can still get our Porsche Cayenne raffle. Buy 10 tickets for £20, you will get five for free. Don't forget, you can use the code TOBY10, you'll get an extra 10% off. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe because we've just rolled over 90,000 subscribers. We're 10,000 away from giving away that really nice £4,000 Tudor watch. I've taken up enough of your time. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much for being here, and we will see you same place, same time next week. Bye-bye.